Hello Lava friends, today we will check out Lava Pulse finally together. We will start right at the beginning, install it, check out the given cards, customize it and more. Let's get started with Lava Pulse. And of course the official docs are the best place to get started with Lava Pulse. So let's check out the installation part here and you can see we are still in beta with Lava Pulse so this means you have to make sure that the minimum stability is set to better in your application, which I have already done. And then the next thing is we're going to install it. All right, what's next? We're going to publish some assets. Let's do this as well. And as you can see, we get some migration files here. All right, next you're going to, we're going to Artisan Migrate. PHP Artisan Migrate. I'm not going to run this myself because I have already prepared some data for you. So you need to do this. I don't do this. Let's move on. And now we should already be able to check the Pulse endpoint. So let's try this out together now. This is my level application here. It's a brand new application just with chat stream installed. And let's go to pause here and voila here it is our new dashboard giving us an overview of what's happening inside our application and you can see currently nothing is happening here but you already get a glimpse of what's going on here we have application usage queues cache slow query slow request exception slow job slow outgoing requests so all the things that could be interesting to us to get an overview of how our app is doing we can find this here. Then on the top right, we have different periods, one hour, six hours, 24 hours, and seven days. Of course, you could switch to the light version as well, which I don't do because I don't have my sunglasses here right now. So we stick with dark mode. So back on my application, I'm now going to log in. I have already prepared here a few links. So I'm now going to log in as myself. And here we go. And now we should already see this inside of Pulse. And now we finally see some data here. So here's myself. I've made a few requests to our homepage, which we currently see here. So this also means I'm the person who made the most requests because I'm the only one. But of course, in order to get a real feeling of what it's like using Pulse, we need to yeah, get in some more data. And I have already prepared a seed command, which I'm going to use just in order to show you some more data here. All right, let's run this. It's seed pulse, and this is going to seed a lot of data into our application, especially into pulse. So let's see now live what's going on here. So you can see we're getting here a lot of requests here from the level team. They're all quite active. We're going to see some stuff happening in our queues, cache, yes, almost every card we see a few things happening here and we're now going through all of them together. Yeah, so application usage, you can see now here, these are the people making requests to application. I've also waited a few seconds here so that we get in some more data. And we are currently now seeing the top 10 users making requests. We also experience slow endpoints here, which we have too, that's because I've added a sleep method to our homepage. That's why we see this. People dispatch, dispatching jobs we don't have here. But yeah, this is a good card to see uh, what are the users of your application making the most requests. And this could also yeah, tell you something about the application, especially if something is wrong. It could be maybe because of some specific users and then you can see them here. By default level, we try to get some information about the user, like the uh, crowd image, if there is one, the name and the email. But you can also customize this yourself, what data you want to show here. Next here we have our queues and we're watching the past hour here. So you can see we have your different labels for queued, processing, processed, released and failed. And you can see a lot of them here are being processed. We get some details here and also the red line shows you that some of them are failing. And that's also because I made them fail. We have the default queue here and one for live stream. So in this application, we are dealing with a lot of live streams here. This is also what we're going to see next now in cache. So here, a lot of streams were cached. You can see here the stream and on the right, you see the ID. 
And you can see a lot of here is going on. Misses means the first time when the cache tries to get this data, it needs to get it from the database. And the second time when um, it needs one, it gets it from the cache, then you would see the hit here. Since we're currently here getting a lot of different IDs, that's why we don't see hits here. But yeah, we see a lot of misses here and yeah, a lot of entries here. And also here at the top, we have a nice overview of what's going on with our cache. Next card here, let's move down here a bit. We have slow queries and here we have one. It's uh, select everything from live stream where we're looking for a title with some specific parameters. And I'm using here a pretty slow search. And you can also see here that the threshold also is just 200 milliseconds. So it's not that slow, but yeah, it's, it's a way that I did this in order to see some slow queries here. And you can also see where this is coming from. This is coming from my cedar comment. So this was hit 32 times and the slowest was 606 milliseconds. I think it's pretty cool that you already see here also where this is coming from because this could be from different locations here. And this makes it very easy for you to see where this was happening. You can also sort this, but since we also have only one here, it doesn't make any sense. And by the way, those thresholds here, which we have here for most of these cards, this is something that we can define later ourselves. Okay, let's go down. We have here exceptions. Um, there was one in the last two minutes. It happened seven times and it happened in one of my slow jobs, which are called slow jobs. It's a pretty good name, I believe. So yeah, you see exceptions as well and you can also sort them by count and latest. So I believe this is pretty obvious. Again, here pretty cool that we can see where this was happening, which really helps a lot for debugging. Then here on the right, we have slow requests with a threshold of one second. And you can see we have a few here for different pages of our application. You see here that most of them are closure. That's because I have defined them inside my web route file. As you can see here, I've added some sleep methods here for those different pages just for our demo here so that we see some data here. And you can see again how often they occurred and what was the slowest one. And most of them are around two or three seconds. Also nice to see if it was a get request. And yeah, if it wouldn't have been a closure, you would also see where this was happening. Then similar to that slow request, we also got slow chops now. And here is my slow chop, which is pretty slow, taking around two seconds here. And yeah, similar to the other cards, you can see how often it happened. You can sort it and it gives you an overview of what those slow jobs are. And then last here of our default cards here, which come with level plus slow outgoing requests. You can see that we have here a few. Currently they're all pointing to our existing application, but I'm using the HTTP client. Here it's also important to know that outgoing slow requests are only being catched when you're using Laravel's HTTP client. And you see again here accounts lowest and you can sort them as well. And the threshold here was also one second. So these are the cards that come by default with level post. There's only one thing missing, which we don't see here, which is the information about our current server. At this point, it's good to know that pass records data in two different ways. First, and most of the cards are driven by level events, like knowing if a job was dispatched, a request was made, or the cache was being used. The only exception here is the server card because this does not work with events. This shows data from your server directly and therefore we need the pulse check comment to be run. This means we need to run a new comment which is php artisan pulse check. So again, this is a special one because this is checking our server. And if we go back here and wait a few seconds, we should see now here right at the top some information about our current server. And now here he is. Mine is called the machine. We see CPU usage, we see memory, and we see storage, which is a pretty nice overview for your application server to see how, yeah, the performance of your server is doing here. And also, by the way, this looks super nice here. I think overall the dashboard turned out really well. The design here is very well made and it's very appealing to the eye. 
Now that we have a good overview of the dashboard by default, let's take a look how we can customize it. So first, by default, um, the dashboard is available only locally. So this means if I go to my environment file and I change this to production, we shouldn't be able anymore to see the dashboard. And you can see here, this action is unauthorized. But we can easily change this, for example, inside your app service provider. I have already prepared here the code. So this is the view pulse gate, which we can use. Let's import the facade and here I can define who can see level pulse in production. And let's see, everyone can, but just returning true. And here we are back at our dashboard. Cool, so the next thing here is publishing our dashboard itself. So this is now pretty cool. Let's do this. Now we have access to window pulse dashboard. And this is our Pulse dashboard. So here we have a Pulse component. Inside here, we have all those cards that we have seen. So this means if we remove the server card, let's refresh, you can see this is gone. So this is how easily we can change and update all those given cards here. So those are all LiveWire components, as you can see. One of the reasons the dashboard was built with Lava LiveWire was that it will be quite simple for you to add your own components without any asset bundling. And for all of them, you can define if you want to show them over the full width or some specific columns. So let's check out what do we have currently here for application usage. We have four, I think 12 is the maximum. Let's try this out and you can see now, boom, this spans over the full width. And then let's to fix our layout. Let's see, we have queues and cache and let's put both of them a width of six columns. Yes, now this looks better. And then we have slow queries. Let's give this 12. And now this looks better again. Yes, it does. So this is how you can easily change the order of your cards, change the width of your cards. And yeah, this is also how you can add your own cards, which we'll be talking in another video. But basically you're just going to add your own LiveWire component here. But again, this is something that we're going to talk in detail in another video. Okay, let's see what else is there that we can configure. So there are a few things that are maybe a little bit messy right now. Yeah, so for example, our cache here, we are caching a lot of individual streams and you can see we have this long list here of those streams being cached. But mostly we know it's about a stream and maybe we don't want to see the ID, we just want to group it so that we can see how many of those individual streams were cached. So let's see how we can do this. For this, we're going to need to go to our pulse config file. We can also see there are a lot of things that you can define here, but most important for us currently are the so-called recorders. Mm hmm driver, middleware, pulse recorders. Yes, there are different recorders for every card that you see. So for caching, this is what we're going to use right now. Um, exceptions, queues recorder, and so on. So it's a good idea to make sure that you understand this concept here, that there is a recorder recording events and other things that happen in level in order to show them on level pulse. There are also ways to enable and disable specific recorders, which is also interesting. You can sample rate them. This is important if you have uh, a lot of requests or a lot of things, in this case, a lot of cache interaction happen, then you want to make sure that you don't want to, yeah, you need use all the given data, but only a specific sample rate. Here are also things that we can ignore, but more interesting to us are those groups here. So let's copy this and create a new group for ourselves. So all of our cache keys are stream, then colon, and then comes the ID. So now we're saying that we want to group this just to stream colon star. And if we go back here, refresh, let's see. I think we should already see this somewhere in here. Let's scroll, yeah, here it is at the bottom. So now every cache for our specific individual streams, we're going to see it now grouped here with this entry. Of course, now it doesn't make sense that we have all those other data here. And there is also something nice that we can use, which is PHP, Artisan, Pulse, Pulse Purge. 
So here we can purge some data from Pulse, but we are only interested in a specific type, which are um, a few for cache. You can also see this in the database. There is cache hit. We're going to ask it because we're currently in production, still because we have set this. So let's go back to our environment file and change this here back to local. Let's rerun the command and it should now purge cache hit. All right. And the second thing that we need is cache miss. All right, let's refresh. And we don't have any data here, but now we should very soon see some data coming back in here. Let's give it one or two seconds. And here we go. You can see the numbers going up here already. So we have successfully grouped our cache keys here to use this group, which is a little bit nicer, especially if you're dealing with IDs or some keys that use the ID in their key. Okay, next, let's see. Yeah, so slow query currently has a threshold of 200 milliseconds. Let's also check out how we can change this. So the slowest is 600. So if we set it to something like one second, we shouldn't see anything here anymore. So back inside our config file, let's go to Mm, queues, servers, slow jobs, slow outgoing requests, slow queries here. And here we have the threshold. Let's now set it to one second here. And let's also purge this before we take a look. And this one is called slow query. And let's refresh. So this is gone now. And we also shouldn't see any more slow queries coming in because of our new threshold. And again, the threshold is something that we have for quite some other cuts here, slow requests, slow outgoing requests, and slow chops. So this is a good metric to know about. And one more thing that I want to show you. Yes, so here with a slow outgoing request, you can see that a lot of them are here for the same endpoint. So this could be interesting if you're hitting some kind of API and you're not interested in like every different endpoint that you're going to hit. Maybe you just want to know that when you hit github.com, for example, that this is slow. And similar to cache, we can also group now our outgoing requests. So slow jobs, user requests, mm, slow outgoing requests. Yes, here. And here we already have example. Yeah, here's one for GitHub. And now let's do this for our example here. So this would be our URL, this one here, and we want to group it to, let's see, maybe just level pulse test, which is the domain. All right, let's take a look. Do we already get this in here? Yeah, here we have it. So this means for all the next slow outgoing requests, we will see them here grouped for this domain, which I think is pretty helpful for, especially again, if you're working with specific APIs. All right, so I think that's it for this first interaction with Level Pulse. Maybe just for fun, let's see, for the last six hours, 24 hours or seven days. So here after seven days, you can see we have some more data because I have already had this run in the last couple of days. But yeah, what I think is pretty cool with Level Pulse is that you can easily install it in a application that is in production after the first hour, you already have a lot of insights into how your application is doing. And I find this pretty cool. This is now a good point to call it a day. I hope you now have a better understanding of how to get started with Level Pulse. And then the next logical step for you is to customize it to your personal needs. Have fun. <laughs>